Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife video for you. And today it's another There Can Be Only One. Today's category is There Can Be Only One Bruiser. I really like doing these videos. I kind of try and categorize them instead of just doing There Can Be Only One for my whole collection. It's more fun to do these kind of categories. These are all my knives. So that's why if you think some that fit in this category that are on here it's probably because i don't own them because the whole point of it is to be like my knives and i'm trying to choose my little children and decide which one if i could only keep one bruiser which one would i keep uh, i call it bruiser because if i call it hard use folder people in the, in the comments go there's no such thing as a hard use folder you should use a fixed blade oh okay all right fine uh, sorry but yeah you know, this is a folding knife channel it's so I, I don't own many fixed blades it's so i'm just not into them so you have what you have. Speaking of you have what you have, again, these are just what, what I have. Uh, there is There are two like notable exceptions I can think of in knives, and they're both spider coats. There are no spider coats on here. If I owned a Shaman currently or owned a Manix 2XL, they would be in here, but I don't have those. Um, but the fact that I don't have them means they probably wouldn't stand a chance of winning, but I've owned both in the past. I don't right now, but uh, yeah. Th those definitely, I think, fit in this kind of bruiser category. Again, over three and a half inch blade and just kind of a, just feels stout and, and powerful, you know, in your hand. So I'm just going to go through and I have 10 here. Sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's eight for these, but uh, we have 10 for this one. And I'm just going to go in the order that I laid them out here, which is no particular order or anything, and just give you the blade length and the prices. Not going to do a whole ton of stats. I will link down below if I have videos about all of these. I think I have videos about all of these. I'm not sure. But there will be a link down below. But the whole point of this is that I'm going to decide in real time as you're watching. And these are very painful videos sometimes. I think this one is going to be extremely painful. Uh, I try not to think about it ahead of time. I just pick knives that fit in that category and I lay them out and I pick them up individually and just say why they're being eliminated. And as we eliminate some, I'll move them around so you get a better look at them. And I'm going to pick them up individually as we give the prices and stuff, which I'm going to do now. So first up, we have the Demco 8020. Very popular knife on this channel. Every time I talk about it, everybody says, where can I get one? I don't know. I, I know the Demcos. I'm friends with them, but I don't know where they sent them to or and what dealer has them next. And they wouldn't tell me if they did know. Uh, but this is mine. I've had it for a little while now. This is a G10. Uh, this is the machine ground version. So it's 425 bucks, a 3.7 inch blade. This is a 3V steel one, which uh, I don't think they did a ton of these, but I think it makes it even more of a bruiser on the 3V, but it's got the cool shark lock and everything. We'll talk about it more when we get to the point that it's eliminated. If it is, we'll see. Um, and next up, we have the Microtech SOCOM Elite, 289 bucks, four inch blade. Actually, it's kind of a short and curly hair is with over four inches. Uh, this is the manual version. And I do know uh, a couple of you sent me very lengthy uh, Instagram DMs when I did a comparison between this and the main or in the uh, automatic to decide which one to keep saying that the automatic is tougher and gave me multiple paragraph reasons as to why uh, but I like the manual better so that's the one that I have even if the auto is tougher the manual still pretty darn tough not really too worried about breaking it uh, next up would be the Spartan Harsey folder. This is an older version, an S35VN. They are S45 now, if you get one. Now, this one has the uh, coated handles, which isn't usually a configuration you can get, but you can usually if you kind of just call and ask Spartan nicely. That's all I did. Uh, but this was my first Spartan. Still have it. Uh, very tough, again, 4-inch blade. Um, Good, very good size, just heavy duty feeling knife. This one is 495 bucks, one of the more expensive ones here on the list. And coincidentally, the most expensive one is sitting next to it. 595 bucks. This is the Hinder XM24. I'm me. You know, I was going to have a Hinder around here. Uh, four inch blade again. This is the sheep's foot version. They come in many, many different blade styles and they, they come and they go. Uh, but uh, this one is mine and I like it a lot. This is the USA made blade version with the uh, bronze, uh, th their version of battle bronze on it and stuff and the bronzed out hardware and everything. Um, big knife, but 595 bucks. And I just, I, I'm gonna, not going to hold it against it for the purpose of this, but I still don't understand why it's so much more than an XM18. Uh, next up, the Cold Steel 8010. 
This is barely over three and a half. 3.6 is what they say. I call it like 3.55, but it's such a stout knife. It still had to make the list. Cold Steel is the only brand on here with more than one, and they have three because Cold Steel does big knives like this very, very well. And uh, so you knew there was going to be a bunch on here. Uh, Andrew Demko designed. Again, there's a lot of Demko stuff on here, but four of them uh, that Demko had his hands on. Uh, but this is just a stout triad lock, beefy, almost said little knife. Nothing on here qualifies as little knife. But uh, yeah, this definitely had to make it. 190 bucks with a little asterisk next to it that on Amazon right now at the time I'm putting this up, which is the 17th of May. Uh, you can get it on Amazon a lot cheaper, but I don't think that's going to last a long time. So for purposes of this, we're going to call it 190 bucks. Um, next up, we have the newest knife on the list. This is the Benchmade Adamas, the full-size version, because obviously the Mini would not make it. Uh, you are looking at 3.8 inches and $238. This is a really cool knife that's really impressed me. Uh, since I got, I was, I, I didn't get the mini cause I kind of thought I'd like the bigger one better. I am kind of a fan of larger knives. As you can see, I have a few of them and I just, I thought I'd probably like this better than the mini. I'll do a review of the mini eventually, but I thought I'd like this one better. And I think I'm right. It's just, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, next up, can't another cold steel. You can't do one of these lists when you call bruiser without having a four max. This is the four max scout. So this is the less expensive $110 version, 10 ounces and four inches of just toughness. <laughs> and this is the most recently used one for dumb stuff around my house. Um, yeah, my, I rent the guy, the, the guy came and like trimmed my bushes. Thank you. And then left all of it just in the front yard. So called three times. They never came, picked it up. I had to cut it all up the other day myself. And I was kind of annoyed. And I used this for it because I had it. And yeah, I have a machete and like other stuff too. And little hatchets and stuff. But I don't know. I just felt like being dumb and using this. It does inspire stupidity, the 4Max Scout. Uh, next up, the least expensive knife here. This is $42.50 for the Civivi Praxis. You are looking at on the Praxis three and three quarter inch blade. Again, uh, uh, forty two fifty for this. It is the kind of biggest and bruiseriest of the Civivis. Uh, next up, we have the last of the Cold Steels, the Recon One. Kind of known more as a tactical knife, but I would still put it in that bruiser category as well. Four inch blade, about a hundred bucks for one of these. Um, S35 VN, really great value. You're getting a really good steel, and it's cold steel, so you know they do a really good heat treat on everything. This is the Tanto version. There are other different blade shapes, uh, but this one is mine. And lastly, also when you're talking about something like this, I wouldn't, this one I almost didn't put in because I don't consider it like a bruiser, bruiser, but um, working knife, this is a bend. You have to put a cold steel, so bends in here. So yeah, this is. Uh, recent acquisition uh this one this one's like 550 but it, because it has the end lays and stuff but the normal suspense is 450 3.6 inch blade and very sturdy titanium frame lock so uh you know it's a it's still definitely i think it definitely still fits and should be considered when you think about getting a bruiser knife so now it's time to start the eliminations time to start the hard part um First one to go. What am I going to let go? Uh, this one's not that hard. The first one we let go is the Civivi. Not because it's the cheapest one here, but just because it's very thin blade stock. I think it's 0 0.12 inches, if I remember correctly. Um, it's very thin behind the edge. It definitely has a lot of other categories of a bruiser, except that the blade is meant to be more, I think, of a big slicer than a bruiser i i don't know if i'd go attacking you know uh small tree limbs and stuff with this i it could probably do it absolutely fine but you know it has a pretty dainty tip on it it just doesn't inspire stupidity it's a big comfortable knife but uh yeah i want i want my big bruiser knife to to make me think dumb things so we're gonna put that one aside and then my creaky chair now uh next one to go this one's gonna be a bit tougher uh, have it down to two in my head. I don't want to have spoiler alerts, but um, 
I'm going to go with the Recon 1, because I, like I said, I kind of, I guess I gave a bit foreshadowing at the beginning of it, but uh, these are recorded in one take, and what happens, happens. The Recon 1, it's, I just, it, it's fine for a big bruiser knife. It's a triad lock. It's still very tough. Um, it's got good steel, but I don't know. I still think of it more as a tactical knife more than a big bruiser knife. I guess maybe because I have other cold steels. If I want to go do something, you know, like I said, like hard use, I'll reach for the Formax or the 8010 all day long before I reach for the Recon 1. Um, so, yeah, Recon 1's going to be the next one to go. I didn't intend to line up stuff in the order that they're going to go, but the next one to go is going to be the Sabenza, because, like I said, I, I think you definitely have to include it when you're considering something as a bruiser, because it's just that, you know, big, you know, durable Chris Reeve frame lock, timeless... They are meant to do work. Sabenza means work in Zulu, uh, but it's just not it's not big enough <laughs> for what I would consider to be a bruiser. Uh, it just doesn't, even though the blade is probably just a little bit longer than the 8010, it doesn't have that full, like, I'm going to wear some gloves feel to it, you know, and, and go out and do stuff that I would look for in a bruiser. So this is a great knife. Uh, I, I, unquestionably, one of the, the Sabenza is one of the best knives folding knives of all time but yeah bruiser it barely made it in to qualify and it didn't stay now this next one i have no freaking clue can i fit more on here now let's try while i'm thinking let's play some uh what eight card monty or whatever here and see if we can get all of them on here yeah we're closer you can see better than you could before Huh. I don't know. The Adamus has the access lock, which I've never broken a spring on, but I know people talk about, so I always have that in the back of my head. I've had so many bench mains, never broken a spring. I've said before, I think breaking Omega Springs is something that if you own bench mains, you either do or you don't. And people who do break a lot of them, people who don't never do, and, and I'm one of the guys who never does. And uh, so, uh, but that's in my head still that maybe if I'm really beaten on, I'm gonna break an Omega Spring. The Formax Scout is really heavy. Uh, but it's really cheap. Which is nice, because you might damage it, you know? A little running out of budget knives. <laughs> I already eliminated the two cheapest ones. Um, uh, so it's going to be these two next, but I don't know which order. And... I'm going to... I know I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to say just barely, barely, I'm going to say the Formax Scout next, even though I love this thing and it is still what I always reach for when I'm doing things like I said, doing dumb things. Um, I did notice, you know, working in my yard with it the other day, I was wearing jeans and it's, it's 10.2 ounces. And it does carry a lot easier as far as just size in your pocket than you would think that it does. It does fit in most normal jean pockets completely fine. But it's 10.2 ounces. And I felt like I was listing to the side like an aircraft carrier after a while when I was getting tired. So, um, yeah, I got to got to eliminate that next. So it means, obviously, from what I said, the Adamus is next. And it's just, again... I've never had a problem with the Omega Springs, but it is something I think about. And again, the Adamus does have a bit more of a tactical feel than a hard-use feel. And it's just a feel kind of thing, but um, I do love the Adamus, though. If, if, if it's on here, I like it. Uh, it's just... Uh, I feel bad eliminating the, the Adamus. I feel bad about the last two, period. And oh my gosh, this is a... These last five i will say are a murderer's row of awesome and ugh.
what are we gonna get rid of next I almost want to pause this and have a think, but that would be cheating. I like to do these live. We're doing it live, so I can't I can't do that. I can't take a sip of my beer though. Um Hmm. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go SOCOM Elite, and it's just because I love this thing. I've owned it for a while. It took me 14 months to find the configuration that I wanted. But um, it's not something I personally reach for, like I said, when I'm going outside to do silly things. I, I still think of it as more of a kind of tactically kind of knife than a quote-unquote, you know, hard-use knife. And it's I think it's totally capable of that. I would not hesitate to use it for that kind of stuff. Um, but I don't know, just in my mind... I, if I had to categorize this in like a category of my collection, I would put it in the tactical category slightly more than the bruiser category. And now, this ain't getting any easier, guys. <sighs> this is going to be a really long video. We're already at what, 16 minutes? And I just know I'm, I apologize. There's a lot of dead air here while I'm trying to figure stuff out for the rest of this video. Because this ain't, this, this is, this sucks. This is the hardest one I've done, and I was not expecting it to be. I didn't think about once it got down to four or five how hard it was going to be. Hell, it was hard from seven on. These are all great knives, and I love them so much. Um, I guess I'm going to go Harsey only because... Let me put it in my hand again first. For the same reason as, as the Sabenza, but not quite as much. It just it, it fills the hand really well, but it doesn't have that big, just like, rah, feeling that those other these other three have. So... Yeah, Harsey, I guess. This is this is dumb. This is a dumb exercise. Why do I do this? Why do I put myself through this? This is so stupid. Luckily, I'm not committed to it. I don't have to sell all these. Like I, I get to keep all of them. Eighty ten, XM twenty four, eighty twenty. Two Demkos made it to the finals. Unsurprising because there are a lot of his designs on here. Hmm. Um. I really don't know, guys. Now the original eighty tens, if you had those, they were hollow grind, and, and I don't know. For me personally, when I'm really wailing on something, especially if I'm like batoning something, which I do on very rare occasions, um, I don't know. I may be wrong, but I would rather not have uh, hollow ground. But this one is not. This is a flat ground, so that's not something I can consider either. That's 35 VN. This is the point where we start opening them all up and really having a, a good long think and where Brian starts stalling for time while he tries to put his thoughts together and figure out <laughs> which one which one he's gonna choose. This is where I don't know, the rubber hits the road whatever that stupid phrase is. Um, I think I'm going to go 80-10 and eliminate it only just because it's barely over, it's barely over three and a half, and that was one of my requirements for it, but it has the triad lock, which is so tough. Ah, I don't know, and now my neighbor's going to start trimming his bushes. This is not sponsored by Manscaped. There are actual bushes outside of his you know, YouTube. You have, to sp you have to specify if you're not sponsored by Manscaped, which I'm not. Um, huh. Maybe I could stick my head out the window and ask him. No, I'm going to go 80-10. I'm not sure I'm right. I'm really not sure I'm right at all. But I'm going to go 80-10. And I know it's kind of dumb because I'm left with two of the most expensive knives on here. But you know what? I don't... Personally, I don't put that into my 
requirements. So I'm going to say these are the my final two, but if if you if you don't if you're a person who doesn't spend entirely too much on knives, it's the eighty tens the winner. But I'm a person who spends entirely too much money on knives because it's my job to. So these are my last two. Okay. Wow. Can you waffle much, Brian? Yes, I can waffle a lot. So XM twenty four eighty twenty. Both pretty equally unavailable, I will say. Uh, equally difficult to obtain. Uh, Demco does not do nearly as many 24s as you think he would. Um, and the 8020 is still pretty new, and they go out immediately whenever he does a run of them. The shark lock is so fidgety. That shouldn't be a factor in a bruiser. Now, people say, but is that shark lock as tough as the triad lock? Uh, Denko said it's, it's close. Um, uh, it's, it's plenty tough enough that I'm not worried about it. So uh, we're going to call that even as far as toughness of the lock. Um, you know what I'm going to narrow it down to is that I think you still get, even though this is a 4-inch blade, it's a bit longer blade than the 8020 3.7, you get a little bit more cutting edge with the 8020. And whilst the XM24 is, I carry it fine and I'm fine with it, um, I think you might run into occasionally the same issues I had with the 4Max, where it gets, it's a bit big in the pocket for a folder, even if you're just out working around. I know that like, oh, who cares, it's a big bruiser, but yeah, like I said, the 8010, still when I'm out working in the yard, I'm all hot and sweaty, it, it, it does start to feel heavy. I think there would be times that the 24 would get that way as well. For me personally, not often, but yeah. Your winner's going to be the 8020. Um, again, they're hard to get. They're fairly expensive, but you know what? They're meant for it, and they want you to use it like I just described. I actually talked to them about when I spec this one out, and I said, well, I want the 3V. I'm going to use it and beat on it, so I want the 3V. And they said, we really like to hear that. That's exactly what we want to hear from our customers is that you're going to use it and abuse it. So, um yeah. Gotta go 8020. Unfortunately, I've not had a chance to use and abuse this a whole lot just because I've had a whole bunch of stuff into review, but uh, look forward to it for many days to come. Like I said, luckily I get to keep all these, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this and stuck around for Lord 22 and a half minutes. This was a tough one. They're kind of stream of consciousness videos, but I enjoy making them and you guys seem to enjoy watching them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I've been Brian. Have a good one.